Okay, so I want to address a few more comments here. And uh, let's keep scrolling down. Uh, Mike Peterson, to my knowledge, there are no organizations, web pages, etc., devoted to smearing the Quran, Buddhist writings, Hindu scripts. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know if there, there might be. They, they wouldn't be very well visited, I'm sure. Uh, because uh, that's not the focus of uh, the enemy. The focus of the enemy is to attack the Lord Jesus Christ and those of us that believe on him. It's interesting. Now, you mentioned Hindu scripts. I was searching through some boxes the other day, and I found um, it's like a Bhagavad Gita or something like that. It's a Hindu book. I borrowed it from a friend of mine. I think it was about 1991, and I, I told him I'd return it when I'm done with it. Uh, so I should probably get around to uh, bringing that back to him. But um, no, it's a worthless book. Uh, just a Hindu and, and Buddhism, it's the same thing. It's a vain philosophy sort of religion. There's nothing of any uh, true value. There's no true wisdom in these books. If there was any true wisdom, it would be a copy from what's already written in the Bible. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, that's a good point, Mike. Appreciate that. Thanks, Alex. Uh, why don't you use one Enoch after all? The Bible was inspired by one Enoch. All right, so uh, I, I've addressed this before. I, you know, I, I want to make this clear uh, so that you can understand it. Right? I know there's false teachers out there that are just bombarding people with false information. And, you know, what can I say? I don't know. Can I get mad and argue about it? No. I can. What I can do, however, is show you as simple as possible that that Enoch book is a fraud without even looking at the book. Okay. And believe me, I've looked at it. But without even looking at it, I can prove it to you. Okay, so Enoch lived here. It, we're, it's talking about Enoch here in Genesis 5, right? And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. All the days were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. All right, so <clears throat> this is unbelievable, really. People make too much out of this. But uh, that this means Enoch died. He no longer lives. All right. And regardless of, you know, I don't want to get in. That's going in another direction. I understand that. But what we both can agree on is that he was no longer alive on earth. All right. We both can agree on that after this point. Okay, and so this is Genesis 5. So we read in Genesis 6 that there was a flood, and God destroyed everything on earth. All right, and there was only eight souls that lived, right? So can we confirm that in the Bible somewhere? I think it says something somewhere. When sometime we're disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein a few, that is eight souls, were saved. So <clears throat> this was uh, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their four wives. Those, so that's eight. All right. And so nobody other than those eight made it past the flood. All right. So what happens in after the flood? We read here in Genesis 11 that the whole world was of one language, right? And of one speech. And God said, let us go down. Uh, where's that at? There it is. God said, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech, right? So... What this means is, after this point, nobody could understand 
the language that was, right? Because here the whole world, the whole earth was of one language and one speech, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so think about this. Let's say everybody spoke English, all right? And then God confounded their language. And so I've heard people say, well, they just, they also spoke this first language, but then they spoke other languages. Okay, so let's uh, defeat that argument right now. So let's say that now I, I did speak English. Now I speak English and Spanish. But let's say you, you spoke English, but now you spoke, now you speak English and Chinese. All right, me and you, we meet up and uh, you start speaking Chinese and I start speaking Spanish and neither one can understand one another. Right? Well, you know what? Why in the world are we speaking Chinese? Why in the world am I speaking Spanish when everybody already knows English? Right? So this would be a vain thing for the Lord to do if everybody could still speak that first language. Nobody could speak that first language. All right. So go back. Now, the language that Enoch spoke, right, would have been that one language that was then confounded. So whatever book Enoch would have written, it can know, it cannot be understood at all. So, therefore, he can't possibly have had a book. I, I know people want to believe stuff really bad, but it, it's just not possible. All right? It's just not possible that Enoch had a book. All right, and I know that people want to make a big deal out of Jude. So let's take a look here. You'll notice... Oh, what am I looking at here? Uh, excuse me. Where was that at? Uh, Enoch seventh. I don't remember. I thought he was in this book. There it is, fourteen. All right, so Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying. Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all. All right, so notice this, prophesied, prophesied, prophesized, what have you, uh, of these. Okay, this, it's not written. It doesn't say it is written. It was prophesied, which means it was taught. All right, so this had to have been an oral teaching. It could not have been a written teaching if it was written then the whole this would be wrong or if either this would be wrong or genesis 11 would be wrong there would be a conflict a serious conflict and the whole bible would then be um, nothing right you'd have to throw out the entire bible if this had said written because then you'd have a major error because both cannot be true not possible. You can't reconcile the differences. So this is prophesied is exactly right. It means it was taught. It was an oral teaching, something that was passed down. It was something that was understood since the beginning. All right. And so any that covers that, really. So the Catholics, in my opinion, they come up with this book to get people away from the Lord Jesus Christ and into this idea of worshiping angels uh, let's see I mean there's there's warnings all throughout but if I could just pick one I, I think Galatians 1 8 but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you let him be cursed all right did I say that right it, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. All right, so the, all the arguments right there is squashed That this for the idea that uh, maybe, maybe an angel came and brought the book of Enoch, um, or maybe it was Enoch himself that came and brought his own book. It, this is another gospel. This is no different than what the Mormons do with Joseph Smith. They've got another gospel that they say an angel brought to Joseph Smith. 
it's the same thing. So you're, it's more or less like people are trying to start a new religion. You know, like you, you got the Mormons, now you got the Enochians or whatever. I don't know what you call them, but um, how about just focusing on the Bible? Okay, so if you were to believe that the first Enoch was somehow scriptural, then you have to believe that the Bible is incomplete and that there's not enough information there. And, uh, and, and then at the same time, you have to throw out all the verses that contradict the Bible. So, you, I mean, you just got all kinds of problems with the book of Enoch. And not only does it contradict the teaching of the Bible, it contradicts, um, you know, like I, like I pointed out, uh, the idea of Enoch having a book. So it, I would just forget about Enoch and focus on the Bible. Once you have read the Bible all the way through and then read it again until you've memorized it, I would just leave all these other nonsensical books out. Just forget about them. All right, focus on the Bible. The Bible is from God. It's perfect. If it's not perfect, then, then it's not from God. And the Bible is perfect. And uh, you can't read the Bible enough. And you can't learn enough. You learn something new every day reading the Bible. That's the miracle and the amazing thing about the Bible. Okay. All right. So, did I just go 12 minutes on one comment? All right. Thanks, Roddick. Appreciate that. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate that. And I believe the Bible talks about seeing spiritually and seeing physically. Alex says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, but they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Right? Talking about the difference between the, the natural man and the spiritual man. All right, thanks for that reply right there, Alex. That's outstanding. Very good. All right, thanks. Up north, appreciate that. Share Bear, thank you, appreciate that. Don Cox, read the read your Torah and listen to it. Do not add why have they added Christianity books? Please explain. Uh, it is finished. Okay, so nice, nice. Um, uh, so let's see, I got two minutes so I can respond to this. All right, so the Torah books are the first five books of Moses. All right, typically it's only Jews that, that call it that Torah. All right, so you won't find the word Torah in the Bible. Uh, so Moses uh, brought us the law, right? So what the law does is show us that we are sinners. Let's see if I can find a verse here that would help a little bit. Uh, for the law was given by Moses, right? But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So with the Torah, you've got, the, obviously, you've got, uh, it, it convict, it's got to convict, convict you, right? I mean, it's, if you read the Torah, you know that you're not perfect. So you're not keeping all the law. In fact, uh, the question becomes, do you even understand the law because Jesus further elaborates on the the wisdom of the law if you will and to show us that we are far from perfect so the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ once we are once we have faith in Christ we are no longer under a schoolmaster so Having the law isn't going to save you. It was never saved anybody. The, in the Old Testament, the Jews were under the law because that was the covenant that they had to obey the law. But the, it's always been the same. The law was there to bring us to Christ. All right, so that's 15. All right, appreciate that, though. Appreciate the comments.